Hello and welcome to another Rightly Witterings with me, Michael Jex, the tea drinking author with a cup of tea at last. Slightly tepid, unfortunately, because as I sat down to record, an oil tanker arrived with oil for that, for our central heating. Hey ho, I've been asked by Louise to do a little, well, she actually asked me a straightforward question and I said thank you, that gives me an excuse for a recording. She's interested in the idea of a Conway Stewart pen with a lever fill and whether you get a better fill using a Visconti or Pineda travelling inkwell. And I thought that seemed like a really good idea for a video, so I thought I'd do one. Now, I've got to just say the obvious things. If you like this sort of video, then do please go down to the bottom. You can hit the like button. That drives me further up the algorithm for YouTube and means that more people get to see my videos, which is very nice because it means I get paid a little bit of money for advertising. But apart from that, no. Still, never mind. Interesting stuff. Right. Conway Stewart. I am a brand ambassador for Conway Stewart. This is the Indiana Jones special edition, limited edition, a model 58. And I love this pen purely because um, it's tiny. I, mean, I bought a Churchill pen from Conway Stewart when they were very new. And that was lovely. But the early editions were very light. And so I've never really, I, I used to use that a lot at home. But there were a couple of things about it. One was the black plastic started getting a bit scratched when I was taking it out. I was working at university at the time, helping students writing their theses and dissertations. And I didn't want it to get scratched. So I acquired a Visconti Homo sapiens because it's made of lava, effectively. And you don't ever scratch a Visconti Homo sapiens made from lava. So... My little Conway Stewart got retired, my Churchill. But some years ago, I was given this by Conway Stewart for services rendered to marketing. And basically, this is that much smaller and it fits in my shirt pocket. Which makes it very convenient for everyday use. And it is in use every single day. It's smaller. It's um thinner in section and it's um it's just a really useful handy size for a little note pen but the nice thing about this particular one is it's a lever fill and what louise asked was would you get a better fill of a lever fill conway stewart using one of these because the obvious way to fill a pen is you hold your ink well, you dunk your pen in it, click the lever, and it sucks up ink. With a vacuum filler, if you do that, you hold the vacuum filling pen that way, and then release the vacuum, it'll suck up a good amount of ink, but it won't fill the pen. If you fill one of these, put the pen in, turn it upside down, and then release it a vacuum filler will get absolutely full stonkingly full i've tried it with my homo sapiens viscontis i've also tried it with my pineda and every time a vacuum filler will get a massive amount of ink in it so the question i had was would it do the same with this now what i thought i would do because i'm clever like this is i thought i would measure first of all how heavy the pen was empty and then fill it first of all filling it with water that way up i've just dripped water of my desk never mind i thought i'd do that fill it weigh it and see how much ink there was in it and then i thought i would do the same thing but filling it upside down with the inkwells and see how well they did. The result was really interesting. 
the result demonstrated that my cooking digital scales are not accurate enough because it discerned no noticeable difference in weight with any of the three. Which means, I think, that the ink sack that you've got inside of his Conti Model 58 is less than 1cc, which probably isn't surprising because you get less than 1cc in a standard ink cartridge in, um, I think, think an awful lot of um, cartridge converters they'll be less than a full amount so that wasn't going to work so then I got um, a medicine measuring cup and tried filling and emptying ten times to get a decent sort of measure and it was under 10 cc's when I did that and to be absolutely honest it made not a blind bit of difference whether i did it the right way up or inverted with either of these two so the short answer is i think if you want to use one of these devices they're very handy for traveling around but they're not going to give you any sort of a difference in fill if you're using a lever fill. What will make a difference is they're going to be much more convenient to carry than an ink bottle. And if you're using a lever fill and you're going to be writing a lot, that makes them practical. One thing I would say, these things are, I think, think about 60 to 70 pounds now whereas these are about 20 I think I'm not sure you can just get Nalgene pots from go outdoors and a variety of other stores which will give you the same sort of functionality in terms of ease of use with the lever fill and they'll be unbreakable they're not made of glass they'll be light they won't allow you to have a tight fit because the advantage of these in theory is that you have a simple cone at the top. Now, with the Visconti, it's dead straightforward. You take your pen, you shove it in like so. My recommendation is that you open the lever while it's in the right way up, like that. And then when you're ready, you turn it up the other way and release the lever. Now, why do I suggest all that? When you pull the lever down, what you're doing is you're emptying the bladder of all air that's inside there. So you're actually going to increase the pressure in here because you're squirting air in. If you have it that way up and you increase the pressure and squirt air in, you're likely to have a very unpleasant accident where ink comes all down your hand. Doing it this way up, it means that if there's any excess pressure, it's just going to be released as gas coming out round the pen. And you let it stabilise, then you invert it, then you release your lever, and you leave it for the count of five because that's how long it'll take for the ink sac to gradually react against atmospheric pressure and suck ink in. Did it make any difference doing it that way compared to just putting it into an ink bottle? No, I don't think it did. It may have had 0.1 millis, milli, li, milli, uh, 0.1 tiny amounts. <laughs> Of additional ink go in it's not the sort of thing you'll notice when you're writing with it so that was one thing i would say this with its simple cone i don't know if that's going to be feasible to see but inside here there is a very simple cone of silicon type stuff which works supremely well it makes a very good efficient seal and I've been using this for many years. I've never had a day's problem with it.
I did buy a second one. This is the very appealing, I think, chrome-plated or nickel-covered, whatever it is, version of the Visconti ink travelling inkwell. Has the Visconti label on the label on the top, label logo, and it's a very efficient way of filling pens. Could just say there's a line here which shows that you should never fill the ink above there. If you do, you're liable to have all sorts of inky accidents because when you put your pen on the top and then release the air from the pen, you're liable to get ink going everywhere. So just bear in mind there is a maximum level. This is the Pineda version. The maximum level here is there. And this is quite handy because you can take it apart to show how it works. So here you see we have a sort of a squidgy silicone soft gasket, I suppose. We have this, which is a screw threaded top, which is not conical, but what it does is, as you tighten it down, it squeezes the silicone, which can't expand out because of this being on top of it, and so the silicone is forced to squeeze inwards. Now, the only thing is, you can possibly see that on the inside there are a series of concentric ridges. Does that make sense? Concentric? Looking at it straight down their concentric circles, but they're basically ridges that get progressively tighter as you go down. With the Visconti, it's a cone, straight cone, nice and straightforward. It'll accommodate any size of pen. With these ridges, it's not so easy. So you have to push your pen in, and the theory is that then you tighten up on the pen by tightening on that screw thread. The trouble is, I haven't actually found one that fits this pen, as you can see. So what I've had to do is loosen the tightening thing off and then try to jam the pen in. It did work. I tried it with water, not with ink. It did work, but I'm going away next week with the Smithsonian running their class, um, classic English mystery, no, Mystery Lovers England tour. They, they changed the name a couple of years ago and I'm still trying to get to grips with the changing name. But um, that is great. This little inkwell is a superb design just say it's actually got a hole in the top so you can put a bit of blotting paper or something in there it's great not for this pen though so for this pen i need that there will be other pens that you will find this will give you problems with which is a shame it would be a lot easier if there was a conical top to it i don't know if it was um copyrighted by Visconti or something, it's quite possible. Uh, so, if you're thinking about the travelling inkwell, do think about the size of your pen and whether it's going to fit. Ideally, take your pen along to a pen show where they have both types of inkwell and try it out and just see. So, long and the short of it is, thanks for the question, Louise. I don't think Certainly with Model 58, there is any difference whatsoever in using a travelling inkwell compared to using an ordinary ink bottle. There is no advantage, as far as I can see, apart from the fact that this is considerably more robust. It has the conical top, so it will fill without leaking everywhere. It's convenient, it looks elegant, works well. If you're using a larger size Conway Stewart, this may well be perfectly adequate. And let's just, without 
laboring the point. You can buy three of them for one of them, I think. These are hideously overpriced. I cannot stress that highly enough. But Visconti is one of those firms where um, you're paying partly for the name. Pineda, really, really good. Very efficient. Um, but not ideal for certain sizes of pen. This will cover just about every pen. I've used my Churchills. I've used my, Vis uh, my Viscontis. I've used my... Uh, model 58. This will do just about everything. This, less so. So, if you want to have something as a travelling inkwell, it makes your choice, it takes your pick, and you try it out and see what happens. Now, what they're going to be next week? I don't know. I'm going to have to record it on Saturday this week, because next week I'm away all week. But, um, hopefully there'll be something really fascinating and interesting. In the meantime, again, if you really enjoy the video and you'd like to support the channel, then go and hit the like button. And if you're really, really enthusiastic, you can join my Patreon. You can buy me a coffee. You can do all sorts of different things. And they're all guaranteed to make me very happy. And that's a good thing. The only other thing you can do, of course, is buy some of my books. That'd be quite nice, too. But apart from that, I'm now sitting here on Wednesday, the 25th. and I have to re-edit a book, I have to organise a lunch for the South West Writers, and I've got to um, address a few synopses that have to be sent off for a couple of new ideas. Apart from that, I've got nothing to do, so bye-bye. <laughs> and, oh, before I forget, here's a couple of dogs behaving badly. Oh. <laughs>